John here guys and today we're talking about the DJI edition of the America by Catalyst Machine Works. These guys are at it again putting the latest technology into your racing quads. Now Catalyst Machine Works uh, is probably one of the first adopters of this great HD technology uh, put out by DJI. But while a lot of people have been slapping air units into all manner of freestyle frames, there really haven't been a lot of race options. Yes, you can increase the height of the standoffs and stuff it into a Source 2. I saw a few people racing uh, 533s with Vistas inside. But the issue that happens there is you end up getting a stack that's taller and taller and taller and taller. And when you crash, as we are prone to do in racing, you put a lot of strain on the end of that stack. And on the top of it is going to be your premiumly priced $150 Vista unit. You don't want to damage it in any way. So how do you keep a low profile uh, without having to run one of those singular boards. And one of the other options is people are running a singular board like the HGLRC Zeus, but can that really withstand the rigors of crashing and racing also? Well, all of those are answered with the America design. Now, if you notice, from the pod down, under the pod is all the original America design. Yes, HD system brought new life into this model. And why is that? Because they designed a pod that basically takes up essentially the same footprint. It's just widened on the sides, maybe raised slightly on the top. And it fits the Vista unit all inside of this pod. The camera goes up here. The camera has adjustable angle on this TPU printed pod. It has a holder for your Vista antenna system right here at the back. Oh man, it has a holder for a flip stick. That way they don't have to worry about um, printing something like this. And you can vary the height of this flip stick by cutting it depending on what type of grass or terrain you fly on. So is DJI ready for racing? And that was the question that I wanted to address with this build. And I went in thinking there was going to be a little bit too much latency. It was going to be a little bit off-putting. It was going to be a little bit of a strange feel. But my goodness, you know, if you look at this at a glance, it doesn't look any different from any other America. And that is quite a achievement. Now, why is that? And that's because the America design is a little thick down low. Why is that? That is because the America has the front arms lower than the rear arms. So you get amazingly smooth flight through the air. They're one of the first ones to pioneer this concept of putting the arms on two different planes in order to get cleaner air to the rear. What happens is when you're flying like this, you get turbulent air going into these rear props and it gives you a little bit of adverse flight feel. But by raising them, you increase the distance and allow everything to be a little bit smoother. And it really is something that you can feel in the air. And because of that design concept, the ESC fits on a lower plane than the flight controller. And that's why you can fit everything inside here because you don't have to have that extra layer stack and you don't have everything sitting on the same hardware and you don't risk it all toppling over in a crash. So really the only thing that you have to worry about is this being stout enough to protect the insides, but it, they have increased the thickness, I believe. So you have your same America traditional camera protection as always in a one inch gate hit. I believe your camera should be safe because this is going to hit before that. I have put all the braces on side or on the front and the back. That should provide some additional protection. And the thing about these braces is when you hit something, you're going to hit the front first. So I also set the props as Catalyst Machine Works always does in their custom builds. If you want a custom build by them, check out their website. 
they always do props out which is good for racing so if you hit something the props are going to shoot you back a little bit first and slow you down if you do keep going and hit the obstacle you're going to hit the brakes first that's going to cause you to cartwheel and hopefully not hit your camera now it still can happen but it's just a little bit of extra protection now because of these risers on the arms this is a little bit difficult to put together um, and that's just a, a trait of the America design. That's not an HD or DJI thing. Americas are always a little bit tougher to go together. They're always a little bit tougher to work on, but you gotta think like this is a high performance machine. You know, is a, is your, is a Corvette or a Lamborghini or a Ferrari easy to work on? No, they're built for performance. So you have some sacrifices there. But what is just mind blowing to me is the design that they have created here. Um, the Cadex unit fits totally up here, protected away, and it fits into these little holders. Now the flight controller actually goes in there with some self-tapping screws into the TPU. They designed it with those tolerances in mind. So not only do they have to work with the precision of fitting everything in here perfectly with an exposed USB-C connector to be able to update your Vs to unit, they've thought of everything. Um, but not only do they have to get the fine design specifications, they also have to work with the inaccuracies of the materials that they're working with. 3D printing can only get such um, to a point of such resolution. So they designed around that concept by making a little um, sort of a filled in stub that holds the air unit, that holds the Vista unit. And as you install the flight controller up in there with those self-tapping screws, that actually locks the Vista unit in place totally. I mean, I'm just blown away by what these guys come up with. So if you do want to take your DJI on a race course, I, I can't think of a better recommendation than this. All because it keeps the size down, it keeps the profile down. This is the size of a regular racing quad. And because of the way they've designed everything, you don't have to have extra plates you don't have to have higher standoffs that are probably going to break everything is still compact like a racing quad this comes in at 340 grams which is a little bit on the heavier side but that is with the tpu arm protectors that i put because i want as much protection as possible that is with this kevlar strap that i'm running that has a metal buckle that's a little bit heavier that's with the giant capacitor because i want all these components to be as safe as possible um and just like Design iteration after design iteration, these guys are learning. Early on, there may have been some compromises on durability for some of these Catalyst racing machines, but they are adding the durability back in with as their design philosophy evolves over time. So really excellent. To give you an uh, idea of the weight of this, this is the concrete quad. It also has um, TPU printed protection on the ends and a, and a little flippy thing. Um, this uses the flip stick. This comes in at 323 grams. So 17 grams heavier. That's negligible for a 6S quad. These are both running the same motors, the Hyperlite E series, 2207.5. So this is perfectly um, great feeling in the air. Now, how does it fly with the DJI system on board? I was incredibly presently surprised uh, and when i first flew this as a test pack just in my neighborhood i thought i could feel some latency but getting more packs on it the dji effect um, it grabs hold of you and with that what that effect is what i'm talking about is when you're flying for the first time in any kind of craft when i'm flying for the first time with a race feel you spend a little bit more time looking around because you can see so much more detail in your view. And I was mistaking that for latency, I think. But when I actually set up some baby gates um, and put a tight track together because I wanted to have something that I had never flown before, I wanted to have small obstacles 
and I wanted to have a lot of back and forth and precise movements that were really going to test the latency. And I'm a type of pilot that I fly by sight, so latency is particularly problematic for me. When I put certain cameras in my quads, I remember testing the original Falcor camera in my massive drone or another Catalyst Machine Works build. The latency was so problematic for me, I just could not hit a gate. Well, the problem was I was hitting all of them because the latency was messing me up. No such issues. I crashed, I think, one or so twice. This held up totally fine on the baby gates. We're gonna have to put them on some full-size gates eventually. We're gonna have further discussions on racing in the DJI system. This is just such an elegant design. If you have a couple of Americas sitting around like I did, you can just purchase this pod. It's only like 22 bucks or somewhere around there, and you're ready to install HD on your racing machines. I mean, if DJI would get their channels in sync with the channels that we use for racing, and this would actually work with a timing system, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be flying on this. Um, now, I'm not a super top racer. Last year's multi-GP rankings put me at 255, right smack towards the top uh, quartile of that sportsman class. So, for someone like me, I can't feel the latency. Now, somebody that's in the top 5% of racing, I can't guarantee that they won't feel the latency. I think um, the more and more I fly, I used to be one of those big weight watchers. I used to only fly the floss frames with all the lightest components, the smallest VTXs. I used to just hand zip tie my antennas to the arm because I didn't want to waste weight on a antenna holder and I would break a lot more things. It's, uh, it's not that critical, guys. Flight feel will get you ahead more than a few grams of weight saving, so I'm not concerned about the additional weight of the HD system. It's, so it's really down to the timing systems um, we're gonna have a whole new video where we go and I'm gonna fly this at an actual fun fly with other people on a timing system and we're gonna see how it does I'll give you some more notes but if you're gonna be racing competitively the system is just not there but Catalyst Machine Works is ahead of the game they have already given you a design that is ready to fly on any racetrack and I'm totally comfortable in fact I think I'm gonna build another one of these like I, I mean I already have four racing quads for this season, even though we're not really gonna have much of a season. But my goodness, this is so fun. I don't really want any downtime, so to speak, of on this, like, has this ruined me? And one of the biggest notes that I notice is that even the best cameras of today, which the best cameras that I'm racing with currently are the Predator Nano V4 and the Runcam Eraser 2 Nano. Those are excellent cameras, but a lot of times the area that we fly in has a lot of trees overhead. So when you transition from a middle of the daytime to very bright sunlight to under the trees, the camera, the analog cameras just can't transition fast enough. And so I really couldn't make out the dots on the track when we would go and set up a new track. I'd have to wait till a cloud came overhead or, or it just got darker to be able to learn the track. This handles the light so amazingly. I could fly a track instantly on this. I did note that with the low latency mode on and you're flying very low, the, gra the grass does turn into sort of a blur. That is a weird feeling because with a lot of these new analog uh, spectacular cameras like the ones I just mentioned, you can actually see every little blade of grass, but the color rendition and the sharpness and the other parts of the image just aren't there. This is kind of the reverse, this digital image when you're moving super fast with the low latency mode. Now I think if you have the high quality mode, that doesn't happen, but for racing, I really want the least amount of latency possible. It was sort of distracting, but it's something you have to get used to. I don't think that's gonna be an issue after you've flown a few packs. I did know though that this saved me at least two or three times from hitting a ghost branch. That was the other thing I wanted to do. I wanted to make a split S for myself on one of these baby gates through a few, like I would have to go very narrow through a couple of branches. I wanted to know, would this amount of detail allow me to avoid some of those ghost branches that I was invariably going to encounter? And it did, it did. I avoided crashes because of the extra image on this system in this race quad. I feel like I crashed less flying it than I would have on one of my analog quads. And that's just mind blowing to me. So we'll have more discussions on racing with these um, very soon. Catalyst Machine Works, what an amazing job. 
with designing this pod, getting it out so quickly. They have a full line of three inch to seven inch DJI compatible frames. So if you're looking for something freestyle racing micro, go check those guys out. Thanks guys.